everyone, welcome to another video for Auto Solutions Checkpoint. Um, I've just arrived on a job of a Seat Ibiza. Um, I think it's a flat battery, but it's coming in on Monday for a service. Um, so I'm just going to diagnose the problem now. Uh, just reversing the now. Right, so we'll get it in on Monday and get the servicing done. So we'll just do a wee document for the battery and add it to the video for extra content because I know how much you like to see what I'm doing. So Okay, so I'm at the car now. Um, so I'm 55,000 miles. Um, I've took the timing uh, belt cover off. So I'll give it a wee turn over and let you see what it's doing. So what we're going to do is plug the top down into it and see where we stand with it first before doing anything else. I would never think a climate control module would have anything to do with why it's not starting. So after the top down was plugged in and it was given a fresh hill apart from the climate uh, control sensor um, I, it just made me think I'm like well maybe the battery isn't strong enough to crank over um, I thought because it was giving it enough to turn it over it should have fired really in an ideal world but it didn't um, so I put my knock booster on it and I it turned over. Now my knock booster was only on uh, like one bar of battery so ideally it's needing charged as well but it was enough to give it a, a, a kick so I've just opted for a new battery for it um, and then it means it's kind of set up for the winter you know I don't want the customer going out every morning to a flat battery so new battery is just getting collected the now and we'll get it fitted and we'll continue the rest on Monday. I've agreed with the customer to go and collect it and bring it to my unit um, just for their convenience because they've got work in that and um, don't really want to get into the way of that so hey everything's plain sailing. Move the back way you've got a uh, the retaining bolt here and at the lower part on do that it's a 13 mil and you get 10 mils up here at the side of this you have like a big clip this side doesn't have one but usually they do as a big clip you can lift that up off and get the terminals off off the back there and after getting it in place and um, always remember to remove the wee caps over your back there now if you notice in the background I've got it running I don't want to be losing codes uh, from the radio it's solid in place now we have it friends Hi, so I've just collected the key just need to track the car down um, it's on a big busy street and I just need to hunt the car out because there's that many cars that look like it. Okay, so we're here, found it. So I'm inside the vehicle and I just want to see how it's starting um, with the new battery on it. Because obviously when I got it going before, um, like before I changed the battery when I got it going, um, it was a bit smoky. So that's it doing burlies. I uh, think it's got a blowout in the exhaust, but I'll get it back to the unit and I'll see what what with it. And obviously advise the customer, but it's only in for a service today. 
so if she's wanting the exhaust and that sorted she'll need to book in uh, another time that I'm less busy. So we're about 10 miles away from the unit and um, weather is absolutely fantastic considering it was so wet last night um, so we'll get back to the unit um, we'll get it checked over and we'll do a service on it Aye, the general driving of the vehicle <clears throat> seems nice enough to drive, everything's tight um, would I buy one? no, I definitely wouldn't as you know, I love my Mercedes cars too much um, going out of my way to buy anything like this wouldn't be my cup of tea so let's get under the hood and work what we've got the service kit ready to fire on it now is it just me or do the engines look lopsided in these? Because I've noticed this in the Volkswagens as well. Um, it's basically the same vehicle. Um, but the engines always sit a bit lopsided. Don't know if it's my OCD kicking in, but <laughs> I absolutely hate that. So we're gonna get the vehicle positioned up, get it up in the air. To start, we've got to take this little cover off. Now these do pop out, they're a bit fiddly. Um, <clears throat> I'm just using a little lever, but you need to be very, very, very gentle when you're bringing them up. In fact, I should really have this off. Be really, really gentle when you're releasing them. Very, very tight. Okay, obviously there's less chance of you mixing these up. I always go number one from the cam belt. So number one is the furthest cable, so that's a longer cable. Right, notice number three, the cable isn't as long. Right, so that's number three. And number two, you can't go wrong with this, number two. It's a shorter cable, and then you get the really, really short cable with this coil pack. Okay, so we just got to whip the Plug in a bit. Before you continue, put your oil cap back on. <clears throat> this will stop any contaminants, any debris, or anything get into it. Even this mucky stuff, a few particles of that. You just want to keep that out of your engine. Okay, we've got a 10 millimeter um, spark plug uh, socket. Okay, so it's definitely even worth along it. Uh, so we're just going to get the new ones in. Okay, so we've got the new ones to go into it. They're even matching numbers as well. Always make sure that you use the right spark plugs. Um, I actually bought a Cerebitha. Oh, this is going back maybe eight years ago. From the market, it was a non-runner. I took the the risk in buying it, and I'll just yeah, I took the risk in buying the vehicle as a non-runner, <clears throat> thinking it would be a nice simple fix. But what had happened was whoever it was that done the service had put the wrong spark plugs in it, and they were too long. Um, and basically, what's happened, the vehicles went. We went to drive the vehicle away and basically the pistons have slapped up, ended up putting a hole in the piston and smashing the spark plugs up as well um, and basically ruined the car. So either 
it was their own car and they were trying to save money or it just wasn't an educated uh, mechanic doing the job. My money is they've attempted to do it themselves without the proper guidance. I don't begrudge people doing work on their own cars as long as they're doing it right. You know, there's a complete wrong way and that's how most cars that have been worked on at home end up in the scrapyard. Um, just basically poor judgment and you know not enough not enough experience. And hey presto, spark plug strings, everything funky dory. So we just got to get the leads and the coils back on. So we'll start where we left off. We need to pop this out. Mm. There must have been a special way to get that third one out. The, the words of Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. Obviously, <laughs> it's a roundabout way of doing it, but it gets it done. Make sure they're all well popped in. Okay. One thing I may add, I hope I say I feel like I'm more old school than new school, and um, because old school's my era. Um, aye, fair enough, things have become more advanced with vehicles and that, but I really think that we should take a step back and go back to basics with engines, uh, because they were a lot easier to work on. You know, I can remember whenever I was a kid, like my dad, working on the cars out in the street, out in the driveway, you know, it was a complete buzz, I loved that. That was part of part of my life that I really enjoyed growing up. Um, <clears throat> and obviously I used to see other people's dads working on their cars outside the house as well. You know, things were more manageable and you know, like even even the old Ford Cafinas and that, see if you see if you burst a, a timing belt on that, chances are you've done limited damage. You know, maybe push rod damage. You know. Um, so. It's one of them things. Obviously, manufacturers need to make cars harder to work on so that the likes of the average person at home doesn't work on their own vehicle. You know, it's just so that the, the garages, the car garages, even main dealers and that make more money doing potentially more difficult stuff and everything is becoming more computerized as well. I don't like the way things are going. I'm not really with the electric vehicles, as you've probably noticed in previous videos. I don't really rate them. You know, I've watched a lot of videos of vehicles going on fire, and it just so happens they're electric vehicle. And I, they are absolutely deadly. See, they may go on fire. So, you just got to take things in the in the consideration. Old school is definitely the way forward. We need to backtrack and uh, go more old school make things more user friendly and take away all the jargon. To see to be honest, but then like you've got I onboard computers and that you get onto the internet and whatever. Internet is ruining the world. But I'm not gonna rabbit on about that all all this episode, so then <clears throat> we'll go on to something else. We'll do the air filter now. So the air filter, it's just a store head screwdriver for these. So you'll have like five in total. 
Just got to put a wee bit, wee bit of persuasion on the ends of them. They just look a bit dry and rusty. But also, at the side of it, a little pipe getting into it. These here just pop out. So there's like a wee suction thing inside. There we go. Rip, rip everything off there. Eh? Right, okay. So we're just gonna focus on the star heads. Get them off. So let's get this air filter off. pretty decent condition. I would say the service on this vehicle isn't that old, but we don't actually know exactly when, because there wasn't a receipt inside to the later server. Right. So there we go. Just got to position wrong. So what I was doing there was comparing just to see if there's any differences, but there isn't. Perfect, and we're good to go. Now another wee tip uh, when it comes to using servicing parts. Um, when you're handling them, and you're comparing them with something else, make sure your hands are clean. And the reason being, if they are the wrong parts, whoever you've got the parts off may not take them back if there's oily handprints on them. For me, it doesn't really matter because I know exactly that these are the right ones. Um, but obviously, whenever you're buying from the likes of uh, Euro car parts or something like that, you're not always guaranteed the right parts. So what's left to do up front? Right. Okay, so we need to do the oil filter. The oil filter is quite fiddly. I might not be able to show you me taking it off. But I can sure as hell show you where it is. I'm just going to drop the camera down in. I um, also want to be changing the cabin filter. Now, an educated guess would be it would be behind the glove compartment, but it might be somewhere else on this. Cabin filter, a lot of people say, oh, the cabin filter is not, not a, like, essential. I like to do the cabin filter, because the cabin filter helps you see if you've got allergies or anything. It stops all the guff from getting into the cockpit. If a cabin filter is needing changed, or whatever, um, if you notice your car steams up quite a lot inside, like in, in the morning times and that, it might be down to the cabin filter being clogged up and maybe wet so it's always good practice changing them okay so we're looking down i've got a wee lamp further in so you've got your manifold here right and by the looks of it it's an original cat and we like original cat so you've got your oil filter here the little nut on the top of that I think it might be a 27 or something but I'll get further in they'll be able to tell you exactly what it is I stand corrected guys it's a 30 30 mil so just let you know I'm gonna do the oil filter so I've got my oil tray just gonna have it underneath to catch the drips coming from the oil filter so 30 mil in socket on it. You just gotta be careful because it'll still have oil in it. There so we've got the old one and we've got the new one. So it's a bit of a mix and match. Uh, it appears to have had uh, man service in parts and it's had a TJ filter. I prefer to use mine as much as I can so 
So what, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lube the top of that. Now obviously because it's going in that way, I can't fill it with oil. Usually what I would do would be fill the, the filter with oil and then zap it up. But because it's going in that way, I can only lube the outside of it. Just makes it seat better, eh, just lubing the rubber. That's just got some oil around the edge of it. I put a wee drop inside, but obviously, just remember that when you're putting it in, if it starts spilling out all over the place. I just put a wee drop in. Okay, we need to get it back in. If you go in from, if you're doing the same as me, if you go in from the right hand side of the fan, right, and reach the filter underneath the cat, and then reach in with your left hand, at the other side of the manifold and grab the filter and then screw it up on it's the easiest method and then it means nothing's getting damaged no pipes are in the way getting damaged Okay, so we're underneath it and we're going to be removing the oil. Um, it's a 19mm. You can either use a socket or a spanner. My choice of weapon today is the spanner, the ratchet spanner. Just make sure your oil container underneath is in place to catch the oil. Now I've noticed uh, when driving it, it's got a blow from the exhaust. And so I will get a look at that. I want to advise the customer the best I can with it. You want to wait till all the oil's out and then put the sun bung back on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take it over and see if I can find a washer the same size and I'll just replace the washer on this also and give the sun bung a little clean. Let's get it back on. I put the some bung on the wire wheel as well, uh, just to give it a good clean up. And once you're satisfied, you're in, in the right thread and you're not cross threading, that's when you tighten it up. Just nip it up, not over tighten it, but make sure it's tight because <laughs> you're trying to hold the oil in. Um, Right, there we go. Just gotta get some oil in it and then we'll do the cabin filter. So let's get the new oil in. 3.2 litres. Okay. And we're using 5 over 30 LS Pro. It's designed specifically for Volkswagen and Audis and whatnot, petrol and diesel. So you're pretty good to go with it. Okay, so that's 3.2 litres put in. Just let it run over and circulate the oil around the engine and we'll give it a last dip then we'll do the cabin filter and we'll get it back to the customer
<laughs> okay, you are probably wondering when I'm going to do this cabin filter. Well, I'm saving the best till last. It is so easy, it is unreal. Okay, so up above the passenger footwell, you've got this is your pollen filter housing, also cabin filter housing. Um, that's the name for it. So this slider you need to slide across and the other slider you need to slide across. Um, and then this here comes down. You check the condition of it. Absolutely minging. It's got some bugs in it as well. We need to retrieve the old one. Absolutely stinking. Okay, but it just shows you that this does exactly what it should be doing and keeping all this crap away from you when you're driving inside the vehicle. So we'll get this new one out and we'll get it on. Hard to do all this single handed, but hey ho, there is your brand spanking new one in beautiful condition. Needing to position this one back in. And put it back in its little house. Gently slide it in. Don't want to be too rough with it because they're just paper. There we go. It's as easy as that. So there we have it friends, a relatively easy service um, on a Cerebitha 1.4. Uh, so if you're tackling this yourself, there's nothing that difficult about it. Um, just make sure that you, you're careful doing what you're doing because um, you don't want to be breaking stuff and your service costing more than what it should have been. Um, but aye, there you go. So that's been the oil filter, the air filter, the cabin filter, and the plugs, and oil. So we're all good with it. Okay, so it's time to look over the body of it. So two front tires, really worn thin at each side. Tread's still good, it's got cracks along the tread though. So definitely recommend they get changed. Suspension, all seems fine. Uh, this wee bit, this came away. Oh look, let me see. Uh, so the wee gator on the suspension, that's gubbed. Everything seems fine. This tyre is pretty much the same as well as the other side and plus whenever I collected it, it was under inflated it appears it's had, I wouldn't say very recent but it's definitely had a spring on this side so it has, um, everything seems to be in good order underneath it's got splash guards um, it's got a blowout from the flexi, just ever so slightly I'm actually quite surprised that there's two catalytic converters on this. But yeah, uh, you can't really access the brake pipes, like obviously for an MOT test or anything, you couldn't really tell the condition off them. Um, I 
a little fuel filter. Bit of corrosion here in the spring, but it's not fractured or anything. I would say it's in pretty decent condition. Nice there, but have a friend. The vehicle seems to be in good roadworthy condition. It's still got an MOT till May. So we'll just uh, get it down, get the cabin filter on it, and get it back to the customer. So if you haven't already done so, thumb the subscribe button down below, and I'll be ever so grateful. But I, you've been with me on this chapter, and many more to come. You guys take care, 1010 over and out.